Today we pick up in Genesis chapter 29, and uh, we're going to look at verses 1 through 12. So following our SOAP uh, study method, an acronym that stands for Scripture, Observation, Application, Prayer, let's begin with the Scripture. Then Jacob went on his journey and came to the land of the people of the east. As he looked, he saw a well in the field, and behold, three flocks of sheep lying beside it. For out of that well the flocks were watered. The stone on the well's mouth was large, and when all the flocks were gathered there, the shepherds would roll the stone from the mouth of the well and water the sheep, and put the stone back in its place over the mouth of the well. Then Jacob said to them, My brothers, where do you come from? They said, We are from Haran. He said to them, Do you know Laban the son of Nahor? They said, We know him. He said to them, Is it well with him? They said, It is well, and see, Rachel his daughter is coming with the sheep. He said, Behold, it is high day. It is not time for the livestock to be gathered together. Water the sheep and go, pasture them. But they said, We cannot until all the flocks are gathered and the stone is rolled from the mouth of the well. Then we will water the sheep. While they were still speaking with them, Rachel came to her fa- with her father's sheep, for she was a shepherdess. Now as soon as Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, Jacob came near and rolled the stone from the, mouth, the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his, mo- his mother's brother. Then Jacob kissed Rachel and wept aloud. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's kinsman and that he was Rebekah's son, and she ran and told her father. Now, as we observe some things in this passage, we know that prior, in chapter 28, Jacob had left. He had met with God in in that vision of the the staircase, the ladder to heaven, and um, he has left because Esau wants to kill him after he has deceptively, in cahoots with his mother, uh, taken the blessing. We've looked at all that. We've now seen Jacob, at the instruction of his mother and his father, are is going to Laban. He's been instructed to stay there until his brother's anger comes to to calm down and cool down. And also, he's been instructed to take a wife from uh, Laban's daughters. So Jacob is here, and he's he's going, he's journeying, he's finally in the land of the east, and he sees this well out in front of him he sees a bunch of flocks gathered now his father Jacob had flocks Abraham had flocks and so he knows something even though he was a man of the tents he knows something of of animal husbandry and of livestock and it's not the right time of day to be doing this but it was a large stone the flocks would be gathered and the shepherds would work together to move this stone off the mouth of the well well they were waiting and you know Jacob is inquiring with them do you know Nahor he's trying to you know Laban the son of Nahor he's trying to find his uncle and he finds out, yeah, he's, he's in the right spot, and there is even his, his cousin Rachel, the daughter of Laban. Now, it's interesting the, what happens here, because when Jacob hears that Rachel is coming, the shepherdess, it is then that Jacob goes and rolls that stone from the mouth of the well. Now, it's very interesting here, because some theologians commentate on this. You know, Jacob was, in a sense, being a he-man you know, here comes J- Rachel. He, we know as we're going to go on in the passage that he loves Rachel from the first time he saw her. She's very beautiful. Uh, he knows he's been instructed to take a wife. And when he sees her coming, this is when he, you know, rises up with gumption and he moves that stone by himself that took multiple shepherds typically to move. Some commentators commentate on that. Um, it's not clearly said in this passage. Uh, but it, it, it makes sense that that's something that Jacob very well may have done based on the context here and, and what we know is going on. Now, Jacob greets Rachel with a kiss. Now, that's, a, that's not necessarily meaning anything um, romantic. In the East, there certainly was kissing of the relatives. It, it was a very common practice. For example, in France, which is not the East, but in France, you know, it's a common practice to... Uh, greet or, or say goodbye in a sense with a kiss on both cheeks and, and there is a custom kind of like that in the east and so that's most likely what is going on here there does not seem any clues uh, that Jacob is overtly trying to be romantic here as he first sees his cousin Rachel 
But nonetheless, we see many interesting things. God has brought Jacob to Laban. God sovereignly has, has brought him there. He, he uh, is able to inquire with the people. He's able to find his uncle. And, and all of this uh, appears like Jacob is kind of asking for directions. It doesn't appear that he completely knows where he is. It's very likely he has never been to Haran. He's just kind of heading in the general direction, most likely. We, we have no record in Scripture of Jacob um, ever meeting his uncle or his cousin Rachel. And she doesn't know who he is because he explains that, uh, that uh, he is the daughter of Rebekah. He's Rebekah's son who, was, who is the sister of Laban. He's explaining all this. And as soon as she hears it, she runs and tells her father. Now that's very interesting because the same type of thing was seen in Genesis chapter 24 when Abraham's servant went to seek out Rebekah for Isaac. And as soon as she heard who he was, she ran off to tell the house. So it's interesting that we see some parallels, but we also see differences. Abraham sent his servant in chapter 24 of Genesis to seek out a wife for his son, and, and that servant was clearly seeking the Lord's direction. We see God's fingerprints all through it. Here, we see Jacob's relationship with God still standoffish. In chapter 27, well, God, if you preserve me and take care of me, I'll worship you, I'll give you a tithe. He, he's not really devoted to walking with the Lord yet. Now Jacob is obeying not the instruction of his heavenly father, but in obeying and not seeking God's will. We see no indication of that right now. Jacob is simply following his parents' instruction to seek out a wife and to seek out his uncle. Right now he's, he, he still has that old nature, that deceptive nature. The flesh is certainly dominating in his life. We have no clear indication of him, quote-unquote, serving the Lord yet. And he is going and he is seeking a wife, not seeking the Lord's will, but seeking to simply obey the instruction of his parents. That's the pattern we've seen in Jacob's life so far. So we, we observe those things. How do we apply this to our life? Well, I think there's very big differences we see between the motivation of the seeking of a wife in Genesis 24 and the motivation of Jacob here going to be seeking a wife in chapter 29. There is a big difference in the motivation here. In chapter 24, God is being sought and exalted and lifted up and trusted. Here in 29, Jacob is doing things his way. I'm going to talk about that more in upcoming uh, times walking through this passage. But today, I want to close in prayer. And with that main thought, you know, God is sovereignly in control of this whole story, but Jacob is not seeking God right now. He's not seeking deliverance. He just, in chapter 27, he, he just wants God to take care of him. He, he, he wants basically kind of like a genie in the bottle. Yeah, I'll kind of serve you if you take care of me and prosper me. How many people today come to God with that same type of thing? They want God to bless them. They want all these good things. But are they really going to serve Him? Jacob's going to have a struggle because of that. He's going to end up having to actually wrestle with God incarnate later on. Jacob's desires for his own way is going to conflict with God's will and God's way. And he's going to have that battle at a very... Uh, climactic point later on in Genesis. Father, I thank you for your word, and I, I pray that you will instill the lessons of it, Lord, and the truth of it in our hearts. Father, we're looking at this passage. We're journeying through the life of Jacob, and Lord, there's a lot of things we're going to learn that we should not emulate. But Father, help us learn from, honestly, the failures and shortcomings of Jacob in many areas. Help us to learn, Lord, and to be encouraged uh, of, of learning from a bad example of how we should seek you. Father, I pray right now that we would seek you, that our priority would be on you, not our own way. Father, that we would not just look back and see your sovereignty in the middle of our sin, even though it's true that you are sovereign, but Father, that we would be actively seeking your will, trusting in your sovereignty and seeking your face. Father, there, there is a difference there in how we are seeking to walk live. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.